Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Soren here today with another video and back by popular demand We're gonna bring you five more After Effects transitions that you need to know So today we're gonna be going over another five simple ones that are used quite often. This is gonna be the displacement map warp luma fade half and half and the swirl slash vortex effect so we're gonna go ahead and get it started out real quick with the displacement map this one is the most highly requested and it's pretty easy which is uh, good to know so you're gonna go ahead and go over to your effects and presets or you can go up here to effect and you're gonna go and find the displacement map you're gonna put that on it's gonna mess it up a little bit here at the start but we're gonna fix that so one thing you want to make sure is that you change the uh, horizontal displacement to saturation and the vertical displacement to saturation as well you're gonna per you're gonna turn both of these values down to zero and then when I like to do this I like to make sure I'm just doing it on one axis so you can either go just the vertical or you can go just the horizontal it doesn't really matter uh, today I'm just gonna use the vertical because that's what I use the most and uh, also make sure you turn wrap pixels around something to make sure you know all right so you're gonna go ahead and keyframe the vertical displacement at zero you're gonna go to the frame right before your clip switches over so about right here for me and you're gonna turn it all the way up to let's see here we'll say maybe 600 and then you're gonna go to where the clip switches over and go to negative 600 these values can be different or whatever you want just play around with it a little bit see what you like and then at the end of here gonna go back to zero of course if you hit U on your keyboard it'll bring up those active keyframes and then to easy ease them you can highlight them all here by clicking and dragging or you can just click on the word max vertical displacement to highlight them all and then you can hit F9 on your keyboard as a shortcut to easy ease or you can just go over to the graph editor and then once you're in the graph editor you're gonna go ahead and make sure you turn these handles so that way it starts out slow and ends up fast and then it comes out fast and uh, and slow so if we go ahead and give that a RAM preview here real quick we'll see how it looks so it gives the effect that it's moving down uh, if you're not if you don't want to use saturation another one you can use is luminance this is another one that I use quite a bit and I have uh, give you a bit of that effect that one's pulling a lot more pixels so it really just depends on what you want to see you can mess around with that a little bit more get the effect you're looking for all right so the next thing we're going to be going over is the warp transition this is another stock effect that you should have in after effects go ahead and look up warp and it's called just simply warp none of the other ones and then go ahead and put that on uh, right away it's going to look really weird and something to note about this is it does not work if you have a motion tile on the layer so if you want a motion tile on make sure you put that in a different uh, composition than this one so either composition level above or below but you're gonna go ahead and change the bend to zero so your clip looks normal here and change the warp style to fisheye. And then now what you're gonna do is go to the beginning of the clip, hit the bend at zero, and then go to about five or 10 frames before, maybe somewhere in between, we'll go seven, and turn the bend all the way down to negative 100 and that should give that little pull out effect that we're looking for. And then you're gonna go all the way back up to where the clip changes and put it back to zero. Now, like always, we're gonna easy ease these keyframes. I'm just gonna hop in the graph editor here. Easy ease them. And then one thing to do is with this warp, it wants to seem kind of bouncy. So we're not gonna do our normal thing where we pull the handle all the way up. We're actually gonna leave these down and just pull this handle out so it gets there but it will stay down and bent for a little bit so it looks like it's kind of stretching there and slowing down and then on this last one you want to actually be fast so the first one you pull over but the second one you're going to take this last keyframe and pull the handle down to create this uh, little bowl effect to create this little valley here and it'll have a, a little bit more bouncy effect that when combined with a maybe a scale effect or something like that it looks really nice All right, so now that we uh, have the warp going, the next thing we're gonna be going on to is the Luma Fade. This one's a little bit different. I've used this one a few times in a couple of my edits and this one's gonna take a little bit more work. So we're gonna go up here and go to our layers and go to our new, create a new solid layer. And we're gonna create a white solid. 
Alright, and after you do that, you're going to want to go up here to your uh, circular, your ellipsis max masking tool. If it's not there right there, make sure you click and hold and then drag it over to the lips tool. You're going to go to the center and go ahead and create a nice small circle. If you hold down control and shift, it'll expand from the center and give you a uniform circle. And we're just going to create a small one for now. And what we're going to do is go to about where your clip changes and we're going to hit M on our keyboard to bring out the mass path keyframes and you're going to start the keyframe there. Uh, while you have that keyframe selected, make sure you go up to your universal selection tool which is just the pointer up here right underneath the file button and you're going to double click on one of these little boxes here to select all of the masking points and you're going to click and drag from the center or from one of the corners and you're going to hold control and shift to expand from the center. Uh, ex actually, instead of expanding, we're going to shrink it down to a small point, like so. And then we're going to go a little bit farther out, probably to the end, and do the same thing. And then this is where we're going to want to expand it out very large, pretty much filling up the entire frame. Alright, perfect. And then from now on, from here you can see it expands from the middle. And now you're going to want to go over to your effects and presets, type up Turbulent Displace and drag that onto that solid layer. Under Turbulent Displace, you're going to want to change your complexity up to 10. And then as well as hit F on your keyboard to bring up the mass feather. <coughs> and you're going to put the feather up to, let's try around 50. That looks good. And you're going to leave it like that. That way it moves. And it gives you this kind of smoky, foggy look. Now you're going to hit M on your keyboard one more time. And we're just going to keep, we're going to easy ease these keyframes in. So it starts out fast and then slow. So this is going to have the, the speed keyframes by default. So all you want to do is just make sure you click the first one and just drag it upwards. And create a, a normal bend like we normally do. Alright, so we're almost done with this one. Now our last step is you want to keep this frame going on in the back while the next one is expanding from the center. So we're going to go ahead and split our composition where the clip changes over. Let's see here. Right here. I did so by uh, selecting the frame and then hitting Control shift d on my keyboard. And then you're going to take the clip below it, right click, and hit time, and then freeze frame. And this will just pause the clip at the end and make it so you can uh, expand it out <coughs> without it changing behind it. Alright, so while it's doing that, you're going to take your uh, top clip that's going to appear out of this white space. And then go ahead to the track mat, which is this middle column. If you don't have this middle common column, hit the toggle switches and modes below and, and it will bring it up for you. And then you're going to hit none and change that one to Luma Matte. What that's doing is taking whatever is white on the layer above it is where that clip will appear. So if we look at it now, this clip should appear from the center. Okay, I think I have my uh, freeze frame. There we go. So it's going to look something like this, where it expands from the middle. All right. So now that we got that one done, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next, uh, our next transition here that is called the half and half. This is another one that's going to involve where one clip comes on over top of the one underneath it. So you're going to go ahead and do the same uh, technique we did with the freeze framing the layer underneath. So we're going to go ahead and expand this one out and we'll trim this clip right here. <coughs> All right. So this is going to work with mass again. Uh, instead of the ellipse mask, you're going to want to use the rectangular tool so that way it, uh, it perfectly works with the size of the composition. You're going to want to have the top layer selected and you're just going to click and drag over about half so that looks about fine. So now it's only showing the top half of this one. And then you're going to want to duplicate this layer. Hit M on your keyboard to bring the, uh, the mask back up. And you're going to switch it from add to subtract. That way on this top layer, it's taking away the top half of the layer and only showing the bottom. So if I take away that, now you can see it's only showing the bottom. All right, and so what we're going to want to do with this is keyframe the positions. So if I hit P on my keyboard, it'll bring up the position. 
And we're going to go over to the end here because we want it to end uh, where it's centered. And we're going to keyframe the position there. And we're going to do so on both of these top layers. Alright, so on the bottom layer, we're going to have this one come in from the right hand side. So we're going to move it all the way over to the right until it's no longer showing. And then on the bottom one, we're going to have it coming in from the left. So we're going to move it to the left until it's no longer showing. And we're just going to easy ease these in. Alright, so we're just going to click and drag over here. Hit easy ease. And then bring it up again, like I said. And we're going to do the same thing to the other position. All right, perfect. So now we're just going to go ahead and give it a look. You can see it slides in from both sides over top of the clip underneath. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and move on to our last transition, which is the swirl or vortex. This is uh, another one I don't see too often, but I've seen it a few times and I quite like it. But this effect is going to use a plugin called Sapphire, which uh, you can find uh, you can either pay for it or there's ways you can get it that are a little less integrity based but i'll leave you to do your own thing and it's called s underscore vert or what was it vortex we're just going to type in vortex warp vortex that's what it's called all right so you're going to click and drag that one onto the composition and uh you can see already it gives you a little swirl effect but we're going to change the vortex start here down to zero just so it gives us our basic clip. All right, so you're gonna move to the front, hit the vortex start, keyframe that at zero, go to where the clips switch over, go to, maybe you don't wanna do overkill, so we'll go maybe 16 or so, you can play with that number, and then go to the end and put it back to zero. <coughs> so this is gonna give you an effect where it kinda bends in and out, and then right after this, I'll show you a different way to, so it looks more, a little bit more seamless. See this way it kind of twirls it, it uh, spins it to the right and then bounces back. Or with a little simple change of keyframe, you can make it look a little, a little bit more seamless. So you're going to go to one keyframe, to the keyframe right before it switches. Place one keyframe there, that's where we're going to put our keyframe 16. And then go to the next keyframe where it does switch and change that one to a negative 16. And then we're going to make sure our keyframes are fixed so it comes in fast and goes out fast. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a RAM preview. And now you see this one's a little bit more fluid. It's not as bouncy as the other one. Alright, well that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Please leave uh, anything, any other tutorial ideas you want down in the description. Make sure to leave a thumbs up if you liked it, if you got something out of it. Make sure you leave a thumbs down if you didn't like it and you want me to do something different. All the presets for these transitions will be in the description as well for free. And I've been Sword, and I'm out.